Grinding a Call of Duty multiplayer can be a bit of a pain, but sometimes it's worth it. What is up everybody, Chaos here. Today we're gonna be looking at guns from COD history that were unlocked super late in the progression, but they were 100% worth the grind. Let me know which of these you use the most. Drop a like, make sure you guys are subscribed. Uh, we're just gonna get into it. The MSR in Modern Warfare 3. Following this insane success of Modern Warfare 2 in 2009, well, standards were high for whatever Infinity Ward did next. Now, MW3 was initially criticized for being too visually similar to Modern Warfare 2, but the games they actually played very differently. I mean, the third game in the series being more toned down compared to the previous titles, but it had a slightly longer time to kill than a massive selection of weapons, equipment, and perks, especially on launch day. But with the popularity of quick scoping and aggressive sniper play in MW2, IW and co-developer Sledgehammer knew they'd have to come up with some crazy rifles to go along with that silky smooth sniping mechanic that the series was known for. The MSR was seen by many as the direct successor to the iconic intervention, and for some COD fans, they would argue it was better. Bolt action rifle featured a very fast fire rate, very smooth ADS animation, it also had a thunderous firing sound and a pretty generous one-shot kill range, which made it great for pushing up on enemies and showing off your quick scoping skills. It was easily the most popular sniper in the game, and while some people may have preferred the L118A for more long-range engagements, the MSR was the go-to weapon, especially for salty 1v1s and crazy quickscope MOABs. So in order to unlock this legendary rifle, you had to grind to level 66. You had to unlock every previous sniper. It was a lot of work, but it was worth the wait. At number 9, the AK-47 in Modern Warfare 2, 2009. Now, the AK may have been a beastly starting weapon in the original Modern Warfare, but Infinity War decided to shake things up for the sequel. Instead of being unlocked right away, the Modern Warfare 2 AK was only given to you once you hit level 70. It was the final gun in the progression system. Now, it wasn't quite as dominant as the COD 4 version, but it was a powerful weapon, and it became a fan favorite rather quickly. It could kill with two bullets while using stopping power, and the recoil was heavy, yes, but it wasn't hard to get used to since it was entirely vertical. Plus, there was way more attachments available this time. They actually worked as intended, unlike the COD 4 version, which had a bunch of secret nerfs that you weren't allowed to know about in the created class menu for some reason. The Modern Warfare 2 AK, excellent weapon. Insane power per shot, made it formidable at both close and uh, long range. Every Call of Duty game needs a good AK. Modern Warfare 2, it had that requirement down perfectly. You just had to grind to level 70 to get it. At number eight today is the Scorpion Evo in Black Ops 2, one of the most iconic SMGs from the Black Ops franchise. It was a massive grind to unlock, but it was worth the wait. Submachine gun featured extremely fast handling, a terrifying firing sound, and one of the fastest times to kill in the entire game. The shots came out at a hot 1,250 rounds per minute. They could kill with as little as three bullets, assuming you hit somebody in the head. Yes, the recoil was brutal, but it was once again almost entirely vertical. It wasn't hard to get the hang up. Plus, most people were using this gun at close to mid-range, so, I mean, there were some absolute madmen that got super good at controlling the Scorpion using it at longer ranges, but from across the map, it could theoretically kill in six shots. So if you could hold the recoil down, you could challenge people. The Scorpion Evo was considered by many to be the best SMG in the game, and even some demanded Treyarch nerf it because of the power. Personally, I think the Scorpion was balanced out by the recoil and the reload frequency, but the damage was super satisfying. It was one of my favorite guns in the entire game to use, and the late unlock fit the gun. Was it the best in the game? No. At number seven, the G11 in Black Ops 1. Now, I think this gun has gone down in COD history as one of the weirdest of all time. So by unlocking all the assault rifles in the original Black Ops, which took some time due to the sheer number of ARs, you can unlock the G11, and it was simply labeled classified up until that moment. Three-round burst rifle looked like something out of a sci-fi movie, and it was actually based on a real-life prototype weapon that never made it into full production. The handling... It was weird, but the iron sights were clean. The recoil was not there, and the damage was intimidating. It could one burst kill from across the map, and with the low recoil and fast fire rate, it wasn't hard to land consistent shots. The reload animation was weird, and a bit on the long side, but the damage was up there, and the handling made it a force to be reckoned this. This was always one of my favorite weapons to use in the original Black Ops, but a lot of people, they slept on it, largely because of how hard it was to get your hands on it in the first place, and because of how it looked. At number six, the Rack 9 in Infinite Warfare. Not a lot of people cared about the Infinite Warfare grind, I get it, but if you never put any time into this game, you would never have discovered the awesome weapons waiting for you at the finish line. Infinite Warfare had some really cool and unique weapons, as well as some fun throwback guns that kept the COD legacy alive. The Rack 9 was a futuristic Spaz 12. Now, it didn't have the same awesome sound effects as the classic Modern Warfare 2 uh, shoddy, but it was powerful. When compared to the rest of the shotguns in Infinite Warfare, 
much more consistent, much more deadly, and it really complemented all the fast dynamic movement in the game. Sliding around and running on walls to close the gap between you and your opponent so you could blow them away with a rack was super satisfying. It made the gun feel worth the grind. Plus, it was a lot of fun to use in infected mode, which was actually one of Infinite Warfare's best bright spots. People like to ride off IW, I've done it myself, but if you peel back the layers, there was actually some cool stuff. At number five, the FFAR-1 in Black Ops Cold War. The gun was up and down throughout the Black Ops Cold War life cycle, but it was a versatile assault rifle. It was devastating in just about every situation, assuming you knew how to use it. Now, meant to be this universe's version of the classic FAMAS assault rifle, this one was a fast-firing full-auto AR, heavy recoil, but it was vertical, and some pretty good DPS values to go with it. Up close, it could easily compete with the SMGs. Now, it was tough to control for mid- to long-range engagements, but that damage potential was there, and if you were willing to put the time in and do the work and hit your shots, it was good. Now, it was patched seemingly dozens of times throughout Cold War's life cycle, and there was a time when it was a lot better than it currently is, but even today... The FFAR is a good rifle. A lot of people use it religiously. Not nearly as good as its older brother from the original Black Ops, but a powerful rifle that made the grind to level 40 just a little more satisfying. At number four, the PSG-1 and Black Ops 1. Not too long ago, I said the PSG-1 was one of the most slept on weapons in the original game. I even called it the best sniper in the game and I'm sticking with it. It was a classified sniper, meaning you had to unlock every other sniper rifle in the game in order to unlock it, which could be a grind depending on the order you unlocked. The reward? It was worth it. Thanks to the insane damage and the best cover penetration in the game, it fired in semi-automatic, but it had a shot delay that made the overall fire rate close to a bolt action. So if you treated the PS as a traditional bolt action sniper, I think it was better than the L96A1. It was a huge grind to unlock, and a lot of people didn't think it, its relatively funky handling was there, but if you put the time in... It was underrated. Yes, the L96 was the popular pick, but I think if you get down to hard stats, the PSG-1 was actually the better weapon. At number three, the AN-94 in Black Ops 2. Now, sometimes the late game unlocks are relatively unpopular. When people unlock something late in the progression, they may not see it worth delaying a prestige and perhaps not worth the permanent unlock token, but that was not the case with the AN-94. Nope, it was one of the last things you unlocked in Black Ops 2. Still, one of the most popular guns in the game. Everybody was using their permanent unlock on it. I mean, the rifle fired its first few shots faster than the rest. It gave it a tricky but possible very fast time to kill. The handling was quick for an assault rifle. Clean iron sights. Recoil was great. I mean, this AR was extremely versatile and certainly top tier in the context of Black Ops 2. And it was all topped off with, like I said, really nice sweet reload animation and the sound effects were there. The COD uh, AN-94 from Black Ops 2 is a legacy weapon for a reason. At number two. The M8A7 and Black Ops 3. Four round burst unlocked at level 55 made it one of the very last guns you got your hands on before hitting the prestige button and doing it all over again. Yes, it was a successor to the fan favorite M8 from Black Ops 2. This one came loaded with a 32 round mag, a burst that came out at 1000 rounds per minute and shots that could deal up to 33 damage a pop with no attachments. The recoil? Low. I mean, you could beam people. It was noticeably, there was a noticeable delay between the burst, but I mean, players were more than happy to put the hours in, get good with it, land the tasty one burst kills. Hitting all four shots from the MAA7 was one of the most satisfying things you could do. You pulled the trigger, you heard the shots blaze out of the barrel, and then you got four hit markers, one right after another, and the enemy dropped before they knew what was happening. Now, I don't think the MAA7 was better than its Black Ops 2 counterpart, but I certainly think it was one of the best guns in Black Ops 3, and everybody used their permanent unlock token after they got it, right before they hit the prestige button again. That's, that's saying something. And at number one today, the best max level gun in COD, the MP7 in Modern Warfare 3. It's one of the final weapons in the progression, arguably one of the best SMGs ever put in a Call of Duty game, and a lot of people never used the gun again after they unlocked it. I've said before, I don't know how a gun like this made it through testing, and every time I look at the videos, I find myself thinking that, again, this was the first MP7 in COD history. It's still hands down the best. I mean, the versatility, the power, it fired, it fired at 900 rounds per minute, no recoil, some of the cleanest iron sights in the entire franchise. Up close, it only needed three shots to kill, and across the map, you only needed another two on top of that. With the accuracy being laser-like, the fire rate being so high, it had to be one of the best close and long-range guns in the game. I mean, the time to kill. Go ahead and add another 40-round default mag, and you've got a devastating gun. I guess the reload animation was maybe on the long side, but if you were running slide of hand, which everybody was, it wasn't a problem. This was the final unlock, and uh, this is how it should be. Crazy strong, super satisfying, a weapon that makes you think twice before you go hit that prestige button. Easily, the best late game unlock in COD history, if you ask me. 
And there you have it, my friends. Let me know one gun that didn't make the list that should have, and I'll see you soon.